Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Health or Hoax. And in this uh, research highlight, we are going to be looking at a study that sought to evaluate whether or not a method called applied kinesiology, and more specifically, a subset of applied kinesiology called health kinesiology, was able to determine allergies in patients uh, based on specific muscle testing. The hypothesis uh, proposed from people using the methods of health kinesiology and applied kinesiology is that you can find out if a person is allergic to a substance by taking a vial, a glass vial that contains that substance in it, placing it near or on their body, and then testing the strength of a particular muscle on their body to evaluate if it gets weaker or stronger or stays the same. And they would propose that if you get weaker when you place that vial of a particular substance on or near the body, that you must be allergic to that substance. So um, suspending a little bit, uh, giving them the benefit of the doubt for a moment, um, because immediately my thought is, well, it's in a glass vial. You're not actually exposed to it. You're not tasting it. You're not ingesting it. You're not breathing it in. You're not rubbing it on your skin. You're not doing anything like that. So how could you actually evaluate for an allergic reaction? Well, let's just look at whether or not they were able to accurately determine whether patients who had a known history of anaphylactic reactions to wasp venom who had been tested for antibodies, IgE antibodies, to wasp venom. And therefore, we know with certainty these individuals were definitely allergic to wasp venom. Uh, this study sought to evaluate whether or not those individuals um, could be screened by health kinesiology muscle testing uh, and accurately identify whether or not they were in fact allergic to the wasp venom. So this study is called Test Retest Reliability and Validity of the Kinesiology Muscle Test. And in this test, as mentioned, we wanted to see if they could accurately figure out who had uh, aller allergies to wasp venom. But really what they were trying to figure out was they took um, a vial of wasp venom and water, which appeared in a clear, a uh, glass vial in a, as a clear liquid. And then the other uh, comparison was just salt water because nobody's allergic to salt. So they wanted to figure out if they put venom near a person, would they be weak in their muscles versus if they put salt water next to the person, there should be no change in their muscle strength. So uh, when they compared it and they used clinicians, by the way, who were extensively trained in the very specific and particular uh, methods of health kinesiology muscle testing. So all of their standard procedures, whatever they believe is the correct way to do this, all of those procedures were followed to the letter. Now, once they tested them, they basically found out, nope, we can't figure it out. We can't determine who's being given the vial of poison and who is giving the innocuous, uh, you know, uh, salt water vial. What they found was that the uh, global test retest reliability of the muscle test was estimated at 0.03. Therefore, it cannot be distinguished statistically from that of a random number generator. Later on, uh, they say, all examiners showed a reliability that was even slightly smaller than random guessing. So uh, let's step back for a moment and realize that in health, if we are proposing a new theory on, hey, I've got this great way that we can test um, if people have allergies. All right, let's see if it works. So what are we gonna compare that against? Because if your method uh, does not work, then you're still gonna get results, right? In, in your practice, in your clinic, you're still going to actually get results. But that's because you, you're probably just guessing. And if you guess, sometimes you're gonna be right just by sheer chance. So in this case, if all you have to do is guess between a vial of poison and a vial of salt water, you have a 50-50 chance at being right. 
So about 50% of the time, you should be right if you're just guessing. So if you wanna prove that your method is actually reliable, you need to do better than a coin flip. You need to do better than just random chance. And in this case, unfortunately for practitioners of health kinesiology or applied kinesiology, they're going, they found that our study indicates that the muscle testing applied according to the principles of health kinesiology is not a reliable method for diagnosis of wasp venom allergy. If one assumes that allergy for wasp venom is an adequate and typical model for the evaluation of health kinesiology, then the above statement can be generalized to the whole public. And they go on to describe that according to the creators of this system, uh, the way that the allergies were tested in this study is a typical and adequate model of testing according to the principles of health kinesiology. So in that case, we can start to generalize this to the validity, or in this case, the lack of validity of the entire system. Um, they do cite uh, more studies to demonstrate that most of the time when they test muscle strength, you know, the, the reliability of testing muscle strength, uh, that most of the time it's no better than random guessing. Um, there was one study that they cite in particular in which the they did have a high test retest reliability. But when you actually look at that study, what you find is that they measured the reliability of, um, of the muscle testing using a computerized dynamometer. So think about this for a second. Usually in practice, people who practice this method, they use their hands, they place it on the patient's body, and they ask the patient to push back against them. And then they say, oh, that feels strong, or oh, that feels weak. Well, there's a lot of bias in that. If I expect you to be strong, I might think that you're strong. If I expect you to be weak, I might push a little bit harder to prove that you're weak, right? So it's very easy to influence the results in favor of what you expect to find. Now, if you use a computerized dynamometer, an actual handheld device that measures, you know, pounds per square inch or somehow measures the actual pressure, then you have an objective outcome measure. That's great, but nobody using these techniques that I've seen is actually using an objective uh, way of measuring muscle strength. So um, if, if you're listening and you practice AK, applied kinesiology or health kinesiology or any, any such similar uh, method, just why aren't we using, why aren't you using dynamometers? Um, show me a test where you use dynamometers and get good results, right? If you wanna study this stuff, if you wanna prove that your method is accurate, you need to start using objective ways of measuring because then we can find out if you're onto something or not. But as long as you're still using your, your hands, there's way too much potential for bias. Um, so, in general, uh, it's no surprise that, you know, waving a, a glass vial of poison over somebody versus waving a glass vial of salt water, it's no surprise that the tests were basically no better than just random guessing because there's not even a, a, a plausible biological mechanism behind that. What are they supposed to somehow pick up on the vibes, you know, from through a glass vial? And if so, uh, some, somebody else, I'm, I'm, this isn't my example, but this is a very good point. If you could be influenced, um, look, there are things that are way beyond our understanding. So maybe there's some kind of forces that are out there that we can respond to, but we can't see them and we can't measure them. Well, let's just pretend that that's a real thing for a second. Fine, if that's the case, Let's say somebody had a milk allergy, right? And you take a glass vial and you put that glass vial of milk near them and their muscles go weak because they're near milk. Well, if that is legit, then you would expect that somebody with a severe milk allergy, if they're walking by the dairy section in the grocery store, they would just collapse. They would just fall to the floor because their muscles would be so weak, right? 
So you gotta kind of step out of the box a little bit and put your critical thinking hat on and realize that so sometimes the things that seem a little bit wacky, sometimes they are. So um, this is probably the first in an ongoing series evaluating applied kinesiology. Um, this is one of their more, more outlandish claims. They claim that they can test allergies. That's, that's frankly, it seems ridiculous to me. And the, uh, this research demonstrates exactly that. Um, but they, they do make other claims that are less uh, absurd, that, have, that seem more uh, plausible, more likely to be true. And in a future episode, we are going to look at that and really look at the uh, the process of testing for muscle strength because um, there are some, some major difficulties in testing muscle strength uh, that make it really hard. If you want to perform a valid test, it's really hard to do that without bias. Um, so thank you. If you practice AK and you made it this far, I, I am just frankly amazed at you for actually being willing to listen to um, a, a video and a perspective that challenges your own. So I'm amazed and like, uh, I, I might take my hat off to you for being willing to expose yourself to different opinions. And then I would like to return the favor to you as well. If you have a different opinion than me, please explain it in the comments with research if you can. And I would love to engage in a civil and thoughtful discussion with you on this subject matter because I will change my mind about absolutely anything given enough evidence. So uh, thank you for watching this episode of Health or Hoax. Please subscribe to our channel so you get more videos and alerts when we uh, release new videos like this. Um, give us a like because that helps other people see these videos. And again, thank you for joining us. Um, I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.